Hi everyone, it's Friday, it's October 4th, 2019, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I have a couple of devotions for you today, but first, as always, I like to say the Abba Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> okay, this is called Wisdom from Above. And the reading is from James 3.17. <clears throat> and it says, The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. Today, there is more knowledge in the world than ever before. Computers or fiber optic cables can transmit information in a millisecond to any part of the globe. More facts have been discovered in the last 100 years than all of the other centuries of human history combined. Yet, that same time period also recorded the most devastating wars and the fiercest genocides in human history. We have never been further from solving our basic problems. The Bible says that there are two kinds of wisdom in the world. First, there is wisdom that is given by God, a wisdom that views life in terms of eternity. Of this wisdom, the scripture says, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The second is the wisdom of the world. This wisdom include, excludes God and his moral standards from human decisions and seeks to solve society's problems apart from him. But where has it gotten us? Which kind of wisdom will you choose? And some hope for today is there are people who show great wisdom who don't have a college degree. The opposite is also true. True wisdom comes from God. Let's be certain that we are making uh, that we are making decisions based on the right kind of wisdom. And this next one is called God's love, and the reading is from 1 John 4 9, and it says, In this love, in this the love of God was made manifest, that God sent his only Son into the world. From Genesis to Revelation, from Earth's greatest tragedy to Earth's greatest triumph, dr the dramatic story of humanity's lowest depths and God's highest heights can be couched in 25 beautiful words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you can read that in John 3.16. Many people misunderstand God's attribute of love. God is love does not mean that everything is sweet, beautiful, and happy, or that God's love could not possibly allow punishment for sin. God's holiness demands that all sin be punished. But God's love provided a plan of redemption and salvation for a lost and sinful world. By that plan, Jesus came from heaven to give his life as the final and perfect sacrifice for sin. But we must respond, see? We must believe. We must commit our lives to Jesus Christ and trust him as our Savior and Lord. It's an active trust and an active faith. 
Have you put your faith in him? If so, then everlasting life is yours. Some hope for today is God loves you so much that he sent his son to save you. And if you were uh, the only person on earth, God would have still sent his son to die so that you could be made right with him. Will you respond to his call to eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And if you haven't come to the Lord Jesus for salvation, today is the day of salvation for you. I'm going to put the salvation video right behind this. And if you're suffering, if you're broken, if life has just been very, very brutal and unkind to you, and um, nothing you seem to, to do ever goes right, um, and if it's just one tragedy and crisis and drama after the next. You know, some of us live our lives like that and every day is like, um, you don't know what's around the corner and it's like ninjas jumping out at you and today is one critical thing that you have to fix and face and, and tomorrow is another and then there's another and another and you just, say, Lord, when is it going to stop? Well, today is the day that you can put all the days of your life in God's hands and let him orchestrate your days. Let him guide your thoughts. Let him navigate your ship. After all, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. So if you come to Jesus Christ with a sorrowful heart and confess your sins, admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior, and believe that the blood that he shed on the cross was the atonement for your sins, for my sins and the sins of the world, and that he was buried and rose again on the third day. If you believe all of that and uh, make a commitment from your heart to turn from your sins after you repent, you shall be saved. The Lord will send his Holy Spirit down to dwell in your heart and guide you. Okay, I want to encourage you people to follow along on the video that follows this one okay and as always i want to remind you that i love you and jesus loves you never forget how much jesus loves you he loves you very much and he's coming very very soon don't ever stop looking up i want to bless you in jesus holy name